And so we see that yet again, something in the Book of Mormon that was viewed as fiction has now become fact. Welcome to another episode of Between the Lines, We're the Paul Brothers. In this series, we like to go through the details in the Book of Mormon that are normally looked over, but when you actually analyze them, you find that the story comes alive and that there are many hidden archeological and historical clues in the text. Today we have a really exciting one and we're actually gonna show an artifact that is going to be exclusive to the docu-series that's coming out on the historical and archeological evidences of the Book of Mormon. So stick around to see the clips of that special artifact. Today we are going to read between the lines of 1 Nephi chapter four, verses five through nine. So get out your Book of Mormons, Jackson, put on your glasses, let's read. These verses are talking about the very last attempt that Nephi made to obtain the brass plates from Laban. And it says, starting in verse 5, And it was by night, and I caused that they should hide themselves without the walls. And after they had hid themselves, I, Nephi, crept into the city and went forth towards the house of Laban. And I was led by the Spirit, not knowing beforehand the things which I should do. Nevertheless, I went forth, and as I came near unto the house of Laban, I beheld a man. And he had fallen to the earth before me, for he was drunken with wine. And when I came to him, I found that it was Laban. And I beheld his sword, and I drew it forth from the sheath there of and the hilt thereof was of pure gold and the workmanship thereof was exceedingly fine and i saw the blade thereof was of the most precious steel and so this being in the book of mormon was what we would call an anachronism an anachronism is something that does not fit the time period so for example if we were in ancient egypt and we found an iphone laying on the ground we would know that that was not an artifact from ancient egypt because iphones were not invented then and that's exactly what the steel sword was at the time of Joseph Smith when the Book of Mormon was published. So here in Nephi's account, there's two specific details that are very important. The first being that all of this happened at night. It was dimly lit outside. He couldn't see very well. However, it said when he drew the sword from the sheath thereof, that he recognized immediately that it was made of the most precious steel. Now, I've always thought, how could he have recognized immediately that it was made of such fine steel? Especially if he wasn't going out and testing it against anything and he didn't know who made it or anything. Literally, the only thing he did was look at it after he drew the sheath. Well, this is where archeology span plays a huge role because since the time the Book of Mormon is published, there have actually been findings in the Middle East of steel from the time of Lehi. Now, this sort of steel, it's called a high carbon steel. I actually have this dagger that sits on the desk for all these episodes, as well as this dagger back here. They are made of a special kind of steel, the one that I'm talking about, but it's just a high carbon steel. And as you can see, it has these watermarks on here where you kind of see, it almost looks like a leopard print and it has like these waves. Now that is showing the layers of iron and carbon, which when you beat carbon into iron over and over and over again, it hardens into steel. So this type of steel production was happening at the time of Lehi, which as we said before, was unknown when this was published in 1830. Now going back to the artifacts that were found that Hayden mentioned, one of them is the Jericho sword. Now you can see here, it looks honestly like a rusted out piece of rebar. Only through a chemical analysis, they were able to find out that in fact, it was made of steel as well. And the hilt thereof was not necessarily exceedingly fine at the time they found it or before because it was just made out of wood. It wasn't gold like the one that Nephi found. However, during our adventures over in the Holy Land, we came in contact with a man named Aladdin. Yes, you heard me, Aladdin. He goes by Alan because he thinks it's more professional. However, I think Aladdin is way cooler. Is way cooler. And in his possession, he had a steel sword that dated back to at least 600 BC. Sound familiar? Furthermore, the hilt of that steel sword was ornately crafted out of pure silver. That sounds familiar too. Although it wasn't gold, it was made out of a precious metal. Now, as you can see, the cavities running along the blade are actually rusted out pits where the carbon once was. But in its prime time, it would have looked very similar to the blades that I have here. So in summary, we now understand how Nephi could have recognized 
at night that it was made of the most precious steel because of the high carbon water marks that would have been present on a sword made of steel at that time. And so we see that yet again, something in the Book of Mormon that was viewed as fiction has now become fact. And you only know this if you look between the lines in the Book of Mormon. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate all the support you guys give. Write in the comments any other thoughts you have on this story or any other artifacts that may be able to corroborate it. Or if you have any criticisms with anything that we have to say, we want to hear it all. So make sure that you subscribe and until next time, stay curious and hungry.